Hello again. Welcome back to my attic. Yeah, we said we'd come back here, didn't we? But, oh, I've tricked you. I've tricked you by being in the attic. Because today's video is a Bulmer's attic video, but this isn't the Bulmer whose attic it is, and we're not in it at the moment. No, this time we're going to be looking in my parents' attic, which means we're going to be finding attic things, but from the distant past, when I was a widdly Italy. And so, yes, join me and we will have a look at the things that they found there. They found things from when I was an actual baby. They found things up there from like the 80s and stuff that had been there since then untouched. And they brought it all here and we put it all on the floor. Here it is on the floor. And then we gathered it all up and we put it all in some drawers and I'm going to take you through it now. So join me as we go back downstairs again and look at the things that were in my parents' attic. Bye. I mean, not bye, follow me. Follow me. Here's the drawer we're going to be mostly looking through today. <laughs> Ah, just by opening the drawer, there's a strong smell of old dust that's uh, come up. So let's have a look. Number one thing at the top of the drawer. This is a Ronald McDonald uh, Frisbee. Hello, look, it's like a film poster. Back to McDonald's again, and a classic little doodad here. Look, it's a little tiny quarter pounder box. This is a classic McDonald's Happy Meal toy, which at the time we all desired, because if I open it up, you will discover that it contains a little fellow. That's what counted as exciting in those days. Do you want to see his face a bit more? There it is. But what are his eyes? Are his eyes the light blue painted balls, which I interpreted as glowing eyes, but they are in a cheeksy sort of position on his face? Or are his eyes the clear eyes that have been carved above those blue balls. And if so, why the blue balls? Why does he have laser cheeks? I don't know. I'm going to start calling you laser cheeks. Okay then, laser cheeks, let's move on to the next toy. And it's this little fella here. Who is he? I don't know. Yes, look, it's a skull and crossbones motif on his helmet. And there's his, there's his face. But who, who's he? I don't know. This is a plastic toy from the 80s. We used to have these in the 80s. He is a glow worm. And this one, having looked it up, is called Snugbug. But what's he snug as a bug in? Well, this. This little pouch. There you go. That's what these were sold in, I believe. Unless we replaced ours with something. But I think this is the actual pouch that Snugbug is supposed to be snug in. Next thing then. It's a rabbit on a spring. Here we have a matchbox. It's not a very good thing to give a small child, is it? But this matchbox has a secret. Look. There's two little hedgehogs. So given that then, we shouldn't be too alarmed to find another matchbox. What will be in this one? Well, some birds. A mysterious box with a single nobble on the top. What will the nobble do? Will it make us go swift? No, it's just the handle of a lid. But what does the box contain? Nubbin. What? Huh? Eh? Well, Wizzy, Wiz, Wizzy, what do you think this is? Well, it seems to be a little bag. It's got a sticker on it, but I can confirm that the sticker has nothing to do with the use of the bag. And finally, it has this little stitched on D, and that is D for David. And under the D, under the D is a little popper. Is there anything in the bag now? I sincerely hope not. There isn't. Well, this is the bag in which I used to put my teeth when they'd come out. Because in our house, there was a special kind of tooth fairy who had figured out that it's much more easy to simply swipe away a little soft bag from beside the bed than to go rummaging around under a child's pillow without waking the child up. What a clever tooth fairy that was. Here we have a crab. I imagine the point of this is that you, uh, you apply it to the side of a sand castle and make motifs. The Top Gun Stinger. This is a uh, device covered in little coloured buttons. Doesn't have any batteries in it at the moment. You press the buttons and it makes the familiar noises that things that made noises in that era made. Such as blah 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 and ooh. Usually these would be heard in a toy gun. But here they can be just simply the sounds themselves can be made without any of the emulated violence. Here we have a little plastic toy boat. A rubber caterpillar. Rubber caterpillar there. A clown's face on a stick. A sort of dangling hoop. And the point here is, of course, to catch the hoop on the... The point is to catch the hoop on the clown's nose. Ha ha! Yay! Hey, hey, hey! Come right in, Doc, says the welcoming Bugs Bunny. But wait! Keep out, varmint, says Yosemite Sam. 
Not quite so welcoming, I'm sure you'll agree. A door hanger for both emotional states there. This strange being here is from when I was ooh, seven years old, and it used to contain sellotape. And I used to take it to school as part of a fun stationary set that were at the same time kind of animals and they had little wheels on the underside. That was a, well, what a nice time that was. But what seven-year-old requires sellotape at school? His own sellotape. Strange. A boy standing on his own. A girl standing on her own. Twizzle them up and finally they can be together for a brief moment. And then all is still. An eerie rabbit's head made out of a kind of, of fired dough. Here is a fireman. But he's lost his hat. Look how strangely realistic he is. What equipment has he got? Let's have a little look. Oh, that's not equipment, that's just the top of his shoulder. Uh, this is equipment though. Rope. Rope. The main thing that firemen have. Now, he's, uh, I believe, supposed to come with a lid, which is his helmet. Um, but other than that, he's entirely hollow, so I don't know what you're supposed to do with him. Maybe keep marbles in him, I suppose, is the only thing I can really think of. The only identifying mark that it has uh, is this, that says something along the lines of the Tin Crows. Uh, now, you'll be able to see it better than me, because it's really tiny and I'm having to squint to focus on it. A pencil sharpener, which, if I can find the rest of it, will form the shape of a car. And if I can't find the rest of the body of the car, then perhaps I can manufacture my own by following UK design number 1032088. Mm -hmm. It's a spaceship, but what sort of spaceship is it? I don't know. Collectors, do you know? There's a little man sitting in the spaceship, and that's what he looks like. A Powerball. A Powerball. A most ingenious Powerball. But is that all it is? No. It's a Michelangelo Powerball. Look at him grimacing away. Well, wouldn't you? He's been trapped in this sphere of rubber for decades. A pleasantly coloured comb with a mammoth atop it. Looney Tunes. Bugs Bunny in Son of the Sea. But what is film strifen? Well, if we extract it, ooh, what we find is a little reel of film which could be inserted into some kind of thing and it would pull this through it. It would tell a little story. Oh dear, a terrible storm. And we're leaking. Well, that is not how to draw. I'll try to patch it. That'll hold it. Oh dear. How to move without sails. There's our answer. Oh dear. Uh, I'll try to lasso him. Got him. Point him the right way. There he goes. Hey, be careful. Flap, flap. This beats flying. Look, we made it. Let's call it Bunny Island. The end. And doesn't that look, for all the world, like a bootleg knockoff, not entirely or even vaguely legal Warner Brothers product. So if anyone's interested in like bootleg things, then there is one for you. We return now to McDonald's. Once again, this can be opened up like that to form a sort of dinosaur type thing. Not as fondly remembered the ones that weren't the milkshake one, are they? But don't worry, we've got the milkshake one. That one opens out in a rather more complex way that I can't immediately figure out. Hang on. I can't figure out how to open this one. Oh. Oh, uh, oh. Uh. Oh, what a horrible robot that has become. Look at that. Oh, dear. Let's get rid of him. Oh, dear. Goodbye. There. Ooh. A whistle that resembles a train and presumably makes a quite train-esque noise when blown. A ruler, this time depicting the Simpsons there. We still remember The Simpsons, don't we? And that is from 1991, back when The Simpsons still retained some elements of interesting design. You see, in, just in the shape of Homer's face there, his slightly reduced eyes, the slight curve on the hair, on little Maggie there, and on Marge's design there, that, that still harken back to a time when it was possible to look at The Simpsons, be interested in what you were looking at, but they were quite interesting to look at. It's fascinating look back into the past. Sergeant Major! Sergeant Major of the Shoe People. Look, he's a shoe who's a Sergeant Major, and his name is Sergeant Major, and he's going, I'm a Sergeant Major, I'm issuing orders. Uh, under no circumstances should you be slovenly or not uh, cut your grass really neatly with scissors. Well, sure, I've never cut me grass with scissors ever in me life, says Trampy, who for some reason, being a tramp, made him Irish. Look at that, look at me various features that I have. I've got me floppy red hat there. Don't know why they decided that tramps would wear a hat like that. It was a really, actually quite cool floppy red hat there. Uh, or, uh, but I've got a big hole there. 
in the toe of my boot and I'm a tramp. I haven't got a home. I'm a homeless tramp. I'm one of the most memorable characters from this children's television series and my main characteristic is that I'm homeless and I haven't got a home and I'm a tramp. A tramp. And I'm called Tra everyone just calls me Trampy. This video has been made possible by the lovely people on my Patreon. And as I'm recording this before I've even opened my Patreon, that means that this video was impossible. <laughs>